It was in 1863 that President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring that all people held as slaves in rebelling states were to be free. Well, Juneteenth is next week. It commemorates June 19, 1865, more than two years later, when enslaved people in Texas were notified. But that did not end slavery in the United States. It wasn't until December of 1865 that Georgia became the 27th state to ratify the 13th Amendment. And that met the necessary number of states for the U.S. to officially abolish slavery. Well, CNN's Omar Jimenez spoke with one man who says his father was born in Georgia before slavery had officially been abolished. And they recently journeyed back to where his dad was born. This is my father. He represents memories. In this northern Florida graveyard, Wilbur Bell is visiting his dad, Cornelius Bell. Etched in the gravestone, it says, born in May 1865, which would mean his father was born before slavery was outlawed in the United States. His father was 75 when Wilbur was born. Now, only he and his sister are still alive. As we speak today, we might be the only people in the United States that really can say that their parent or parents were born in slavery. So he's retracing that history, going back to where his father was born. Homerville, Georgia, a town of a little over 2,000. At 83 years old, Wilbur Bell had never been until now walking alongside his nephew and daughter, reflecting. I remember talking to my father, and uh, he, was a, he was a hard worker. He was a farmer, and uh, I guess he was a businessman also. And while slavery may be a tie to their history, their mission in this journey is family. They went to the town's genealogy library. Doesn't happen very often. No. Hoping to find more. My dad passed last year. When he passed, that was one less person that could say what my uncle can say. It's kind of hitting me right now. I'm trying to pull myself together. Right, right. I understand. They looked through a lot of the library's records. History, names of previous bells in the area from around the time his father would have lived there. There's some name correlation. Like there's a Will Burn bell. And here I'm a Will Burn bell. So they forgot to put the N on my name. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Bell shared with us a copy of the 1940 census showing his father, then this picture of his dad, believed to be from 1939. And while they didn't find everything they were looking for at the library, just to see the town where his father was born was discovery enough, especially ahead of Juneteenth, which commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. He's happy the country now recognizes the day officially. With the pushback on history and the, what the country's been going through for the past, I guess, eight years, uh, Juneteenth was a new day for black people, a new day for the country, because it brought people closer together. His nephew doesn't just want to commemorate the past. He, at times, wants freedom from it. I wish we just stopped talking about slavery. <laughs> we can't do anything about it. It was a horrible thing. And to some extent, perhaps we still we still feel the, the effects of that. But we can't grow and we can't move forward if we don't let it go. Wilbur Bell tends to agree. It's about moving forward, you know. But he also needed to honor his past, not just visiting where his dad was born, but in that a direct link to a time many thought was generations in America's past for everyone. I'm one generation out of slavery. I'm two. And getting closer to his dad in the process. My father was Cornelius Bell. He was a survivor. Omar Jimenez, CNN, Homerville, Georgia. Wow. Our thanks to Omar for bringing us that story. Now, a CNN review of census records from 1940 and 1950, along with the gravestone and obituary, support that Bell's father was born in 1865. But census records from 1930 show him as being born after 1865. Now, according to the National Archives, it's part of a challenging record-keeping dynamic when it comes to census records between 1790 and 1940, especially for black people.